Hi everybody. So uh, this is the beginning of a special three video, or no, sorry, uh, two video collection. Uh, joining us today is a friend of mine. This is Michael. Say hi uh, to Michael, everybody. Uh, Michael comes to us from uh, over the pond in uh, England. Uh, he's uh, building a van himself and just happened to be over here on this side of the world and uh, so we arranged for him to come by. Uh, what we're actually working on today, uh, he's getting the quick build wings which uh, may have been a smart idea and one of the, th the real joys of life that he's missing out on is working with sealant. So I thought what better way to get Michael kind of right in the middle of all this crap than to really just get in good and finish off the left tank. So I've been kind of putting it off. Uh, I got a, kind of got burnt out on working on the tank, so I moved to the side. So anyway, so today we're putting on the baffle. Uh, the uh, leak test had been finished. All the water has been dried out. Uh, so we are now putting on the baffle and making up sealant. So the first thing we did was we took some... Uh, uh, fiber-free cloths, lint-free cloths, and rubbing alcohol and cleaned out the inside, got any debris, uh, dead bugs, and, you know, you name it. Uh, this is California, so let's see what else would be in there. Uh, discarded syringes from homeless people, rolling papers, um, undocumented, no, okay, I, I'm not getting into that. So anyway, uh, we, we finished cleaning up all the stuff. Uh, we turned it towards the sun as well, or what sun we, that we've had lately. And uh, so you apply a nice liberal amount along the seams where the baffle is going to go, and as well along the tops of all of the ribs. Now when you put the baffle in, uh, it basically acts kind of like a squeegee effect, right? Because, you know, the, the ribs are in, the skins are attached to the ribs, and that baffle on the top fits in pretty tight. There's not a lot of wiggle room. So you can plant one side, say that the top or the bottom edge in place, but then you have to slide the other edge down into place and on top of the ribs as well. And Vans makes a note of that inside the instructions, you know. This will act like a squeegee and will push the ceiling around. So we decided uh, the best thing would be to have the back, uh, the bottom side be the side where you just initially put the uh, flange of the baffle and then smear it across the top. Uh, the reason for that is the drain for the fuel, the, the large drain holes or pass-through holes are, are on the bottom of the tank and we don't want to be pushing or squeegeeing any excess sealant into those areas as possible. Uh, plus it also contains the drain over on the edge and I mean we didn't use a lot of sealant um, but we definitely used enough that it would definitely push a little bit and I didn't want any chance of that stuff uh, plugging up the drain or anything else so once you put the and now we've so we've smeared everything we've got the actual drain on top drain I'm sorry the baffle and there it goes uh, first thing you do is you Clico every single hole up which is good uh, it's bad because I thought that I'd have had at least a chance of having all of my Clicos clean for once but uh, that, that ain't happening so Pull out all, we pulled out all of the Clicos that had been previously used in the tank, used those first, and then unfortunately had to go into the clean tank of Clicos to get the rest. So you Clico up every hole, and you check for pillowing of the skin, and there is none, or at least there was none with me. And uh, Michael had actually asked a good question about twisting. How do you keep twisting out? Uh, I, I don't know if I've just been lucky or methodical enough or if my engineering brain just kind of knows the way, but I've never had any twisting at all. And I kind of showed him, you walk back, once you put all those Clicos in, once you walk back past the line on the end, and you look down, and you see both lines of Clicos perfectly straight, no twisting, you, you know that you're, you know, you've, you've, you've produced something very high quality. So now, uh, what we did, very first thing, uh, we Clico, I mean Clico, we riveted uh, just the center patch, about four or five rivets on each side in the center of the tank. And now what we're going through is going through uh, applying a little bit of a bead of sealant on top of each one of the rivet holes where the attached Z brackets go. 
and then clecoing the attach brackets to the top. Now the this is the only part that makes me nervous. So the Z brackets are held on by pop rivets, right? You cannot, well, the middle ones are. You cannot get, you know, where are you going to get your bucking hand in there? I mean, there's a gas cap, but, you know, that's it's just not possible. So we've got the pop rivet gun going at the top. The edges, thankfully, are still held on by dome head rivets. Uh, something you should know about Michael. He's a very nice man who also happens to drive uh, 777s for a living. So not only is he a commercial pilot, uh, but he is also big into general aviation, which is, makes him especially unique. Most of the big time pilots I talk to wouldn't know a Cessna from a Piper anymore because they've lost that. Uh, but not Michael. He's a, he's a cool dude. So it was, it was a pleasure having him here. And he already owned a squeezer, so he knew exactly what to do. So after we get all the attach brackets on, then we just go back and forth, and uh, we will be riveting on the baffle for the next video, so see you soon.